In this video, I'm looking at taking the square root of this complex number here, 3 plus 4i. And I'm going to leave my answer in standard form. To find the square root of a complex number in standard form, we know that we will get some sort of complex number out in standard form, which means that we can let this square root of 3 plus 4i equal a plus bi. Because we know if we square root this, we know we're going to get some complex number which is going to be some real number plus some real number i. This helps us because we can now square both sides of this and that'll get rid of the square root. Okay, so we can now square both sides so I can have my square root 3 plus 4i equals a plus b i. I can square both sides and this gets rid of that square root because the square root squared will just leave us with 3 plus 4 i which is going to be well now we square this. Squaring this we're going to have a squared plus 2 a b i take b squared. So if you expand that out using our algebraic expansion technique, such as FOIL, you'll get this. And then what we can do is we can equate the real parts and the imaginary parts. So we can equate the real and imaginary components, so imaginary parts of this equation, because the real parts match and the imaginary parts match. So our real parts are three a squared and negative b squared, so we can have 3 is going to be a squared take b squared, that's our real parts. And our imaginary parts is going to be 4, so we have our f imaginary part here, and we have this imaginary part here is going to be equal to a b. So that gives us now two simultaneous equations that we can now solve, so I'm going to call them equation 1 and equation 2. I can now solve these two equations for a and b and then sub them back into the standard form of the complex number and get out our answer. So if we work on that, we can have a look at equation 2 and we can actually get a value of a from that. So we can actually substitute that back into equation 1. So we can do from equation 2, we can rearrange this and we can do 4 divided by 2a, 4 divided by 2b will give us a, because we can divide by 2 and divide by b, so that means that a will be 2 over b. So now that we've got a value for a, we can substitute that back up into b. So I can now sub a equals 2 over b, substitute a equals 2 over b, into my equation 1. So my equation 1 was 3 equals a squared, so I've got my a being 2 over b squared take b squared. And now I need to solve this quadratic here. So my first step would be to expand this bracket out here, so 2 squared is 4 over b squared, which is going to be b squared, take b squared. We can then get rid of this denominator because we don't like it by timesing both sides by b squared. So we can do 3 b squared will be 4 over b squared times b squared take b squared times b squared. Simplify that and we have 3b squared will be, they cancel each other out, we're left with 4, take b squared times b squared would be to the 4. We can now take everything over the one side of the equation so that we can have it equating 0 and that will give us b4 plus 3b squared take 4 equals 0. The reason we want to do that is it now gives us a quadratic in b squared. b 
because we have b squared squared here and b squared here, so we could think about this as x squared plus 3x take 4 equals 0. And we can think about solving that quadratic where x is b squared, okay? So where our x is b squared, because we've got b squared squared gives us 4 plus 3b squared take 4. So what we want to do is by solving this, thinking of it as a quadratic in terms of b squared, we can find our solutions to b. To do that, we can factorize this. To factorize it, we want to think of two numbers that add to 3 and multiply to negative 4, and that would be negative 1 and 4. So we can have b squared take 1 times b squared plus 4 equaling 0. And if we expand that back out, we should get that equation back again, if we want to double check our answer. So now we can state that b squared take 1 equals 0, or b squared plus 4 equals 0. So solving these equations, we got b squared equals 1. So b would be the plus or minus the square root of 1 to undo that square. So b is plus or minus 1. Or we can do b squared is equal to negative 4. b is equal to this plus or minus the square root of negative 4. So b will be plus or minus 2i. Now, we've got four solutions to this quadratic because of the fact that we had a quadratic in terms of b squared. So we've got four solutions to b. So we've got plus or minus 1, and we've got plus or minus 2i. Now we can exclude these ones because they are complex. Okay, so we can exclude any complex results because if we have a look back up in our standard form, both A and B have to be real numbers. That's part of the definition of a complex number. A and B must be real. So we want to exclude those complex results as A and B must be real. So really, we just get left with b being plus or minus 1. So now that we've got an answer for b, we can substitute that back into our equation that we used earlier, which is a equals two, uh, 2 over b. So this one that we created up here before, so a equals 2 over b. Because now that we have b, we can get our answer. So when b equals 1, we can work out an answer for a. So a will be 2 divided by 1. So a equals 2. Or we can have when b equals negative 1, we would have a being 2 divided by negative 1 giving us a equals negative 2. So we have two solutions. This gives us that we can have therefore the square root of 3 plus 4i will be, remember we had the form a plus bi, so we've now got a being 2 plus b being 1, so it's just going to be i, or we have a being negative 2 plus b being negative 1, so it's just going to be minus i. And we can simplify this down and just say that this is going to be plus or minus 2 plus i, because the minus from these two can be taken out the front. So there we have it, the square root of 3 plus 4i is plus or minus 2 plus i.